Let's get down, let's get down to business. Give you one more night, one more night to get this. We've had a million, million nights just like this. So let's get down, let's get down to business. Mama, please don't worry about me. Cause I'm about to let my heart speak. My friends keep telling me to leave this. So let's get down, let's get down to business. Let's get down, let's get down to business. Give you one more night, one more night to get this. We've had a million, million nights just like this. So let's get down, let's get down to business. Let's get down, let's get down to business. It's time to get down to business with leading business coach, Jeremy Torres. Do you have a problem with your business? Let's get down to business. Marketing, lead generation, employee engagement. Hiring, recruiting. Before I don't mean it. Call in now with your business issues and get down to business with Jeremy Torres. Let's get you on the road to success. Let's get down to business. We are live, everybody. Welcome to another Wednesday night here with Jeremy Torsk, and let's get down to business where I help you with your business. No matter what the problem is, we've got a solution, at least something that will get you down the road to the solution that you most need. Um, my number here is 954 338 9799. Give me a call. We'll take your calls live on the air, or you can chime in with your, uh, with your comments there in the chat. Again, I work alone just like I drink alone uh, sometimes. And so maybe I have uh, Mr. Octopus Arms and I'm um, a little disjointed trying to get to your messages and stuff. So uh, stick with me. I see some people are already chiming in. My Aunt Kathy, she's always the first one online. Thank you. Kevin Thatcher, already online. Thank you. He's on vacation too, I believe. It might be in the Bahamas, but it might be also top secret uh, where he is. I know he's catching a lot of fish these days, but thanks, buddy. Uh, of course, my beautiful wife, and my beautiful mother. Hey, Ma. Thanks for uh, chiming in, everybody, so early. It uh, makes me feel good to see that uh, the, the gang's all here. And uh, what we're going to do today is uh, something a little bit differently than I normally do. Kind of just kind of have an expert, uh, expertaneous, ex, ex, expertaneous. Uh, I kind of shoot the shit, right? Kind of shoot from the hip. Uh, that, that's what I said, right? Uh, and then, uh, you know, I got a couple of notes. But tonight, I've actually got a... PowerPoint here that I'm and no one wants to see. I know boring PowerPoint, but I got one. I think I did it a little bit last week, but it's for a uh, it's for a big presentation I have coming up. So my show, my rules. I'm gonna slide through this PowerPoint. It's all business related, so you might be um, still be able to pick up all the nuggets that you want. But also, uh, if you're a realtor, you might be really interested in seeing this. And it's actually a preview of what we're gonna be doing in Orlando at uh, the Ross Single. Uh, convention center or big hotel there in August on August 25th, where I have a, a uh, presentation to give for a couple, I don't know, a couple thousand people. There's a couple thousand people that are going to be there. There's four other people speaking at the same time I am. So if you're going to be at the Florida real estate association convention in Orlando in August, I go on at nine 45 sun. Uh, I think it's a Thursday. So Thursday morning, nine 45, hit me up. Uh, apparently I got a big room, big stage, big cameras, uh, happy about that. So uh, as we say, you know, let's get down to business. And uh, again, uh, it's just a little bit of, it's not even that distraction, right? It's just like normal, except for that uh, you're going to see some stuff right here next to me as I speak. So it's really, again, no big deal. Nothing that um, you're not used to seeing or hearing. Uh, it's all business related. And again, uh, uh, you know what, though? I can't see uh, the text when I do this. Uh, hold on a second. Let me see if I can figure that out. Because I can't see the chat here, but I do have this in here, blah, blah, blah. I might be able to get the text or the chat on here because I, I can't see me when I go to slide, but I might be able to see it from here with uh, the dealio here with the, the little iPad here, or my cheat sheet. Um, it mm, doesn't look like I can, so I may not keep this in here. Uh, at least I'll go down and then I'll exit. I'll come back out. How about that? So what we're going to be talking about in Orlando is seven strategies to develop a mindset for success. Okay. And uh, that's going to be my pitch. I got an hour. It's the education 
um, hour. We're an education sense, uh, session. So we're going to be educating uh, realtors how to think like business owners, what we're going to be doing. Of course, you know, there's a little bit of uh, telling people about who I am. You know, I say I'm a family man. I'm a fight man. I'm a music man. And I'm a traveling man. And uh, that's my family there with me for most of the most of that stuff. 30 years in telco communication. Everybody knows us. Everyone's heard this from me a hundred times. Uh, eight years at Comcast, 22 years national contractor, employee owner, specializing in catastrophic events and, resp- and building response teams to go ahead and, and get uh, communities back up and working again. Biggest customers in the, in the world we've worked with, uh, AT&T, Windstream, T-Mobile, Facebook, just to name a few. And we averaged about 60 million a year towards the end of, um, of, of our career there. And then we sold this, this company in 2021. And this allowed me to retire on my 50th birthday and build the get to studios and do what I do now, which is live my get to life. Uh, so there's some pictures of me helping out. Of the, and that was in the Bahamas, but um, we had a, uh, we were in the Virgin islands of Bahamas, Puerto Rico, the keys uh, all over this country. That was me walking with a broken leg in Virginia. Um, so yeah, we, we laid a lot of fiber in my career. Uh, but what do I do now? I help business owners avoid making mistakes, the same mistakes that I made that put me out of business one time. I make business owners more money. That's pretty simple. And I can find anyone $50,000 of additional revenue in just 45 minutes. You don't believe me? Just try me. We're going to examine your 12 fundamental business elements. Go ahead and take your phone out, take a screenshot of this, do whatever you need to do, uh, take your picture, and then contact me. We will do the 12 elements of business We'll do the self uh, the business assessment. It takes about an hour, and I guarantee I could find fifty thousand uh, dollars. So anyway, today we're gonna uh, really get to what is the twelve elements of business and talk about these seven mindsets. Of course, everything will starts with people, all right? Scott McGregor, Scott McGregor will tell you everything always starts with people. People first. Uh, that's number one, and then we go clarity, marketing, communication, leads, sales. Then we got joint ventures. Back-end, executive teams, knowing your numbers, training, and ROR. And I can't see that damn, um, what you call it here, um, the comments. But anyone puts on there what ROR is in the next few minutes, and uh, I'm not going to tell you now. We'll get to it later. But uh, somebody could guess what ROR is. It's one of the most important business elements, and it is a Noodleberg staple. So I'll give you that much. Uh, but those those 12 elements right there, ladies and gentlemen, they make up almost every single business in the country or, uh, you know, at least this country, most countries. Uh, it's just business, it's business one on one. Any business that you do, you're going to have these 12 elements. So what we're going to do is have a quick disclaimer here, of course, although I make my living speaking around the country about business strategy. I also am a real estate investor. I am a licensed realtor. However, What I am not is a licensed financial advisor, and this is not financial advice because we're going to have some stuff, some dollars and cents, and uh, we need to really ask your accountant or tax attorney or or have your head examined before you take any advice from me and implement it (laughs) in any one of these examples. So what I'm going to do is find out the average year of the person in the business there, and we always, you know, I said we talked about people first, but as a real estate agent, you don't really have people. Okay. So as a real estate agent, mostly you've got, um, you know, solopreneurs, they're called, you know, we call them solopreneurs. So, you know, with the, uh, with people first stuff, we're not going to really cover that at the, on this speech, but we are going to talk about principles and values. Right. So you always want to start with creating your principles and your values kind of thing the, like they used to be saying, if you don't stand for anything, you'll fall. If you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. I think that's how it goes. So one of the most influential authors, uh, seven habits of highly effective people. Stephen Covey says that principles are a rule or a law that are permanent, unchanging and universal. So what I say to that is that these this is what you do. This is what you default to. When you need to solve a problem. All right, so what we're going to do is kind of just go through the crowd and ask them, you know, for some principles, right? Then, yeah, uh, I, I don't know. I, I see, I see, I don't, I see principles are spelled wrong here. Uh, what are some principles we, we may possess? I don't know. Prince, princeless. I don't even know how that didn't give me a spell check on that one. Uh, spell check, aisle four. 
Honesty. There you go. There's some honesty. S- stuff happens. You miss things. Uh, trust, loyalty, integrity, accountability, discipline. And if you're watching this, and, and again, I can't see my my um, you know my deal right now. Let's go ahead and get uh, let's let's look at some of that. So these are some of the principles that I say have. And then fun. All right, courage, leadership, fun. Fun is a principle, ladies and gentlemen, that we want to have. Right. So uh, wow, there's a there's my boy Scotty. I got, uh, gotcha. I, w- I went ahead and exited out of that there, but, uh, Scotty, what's going on, brother? What are some of the principles that you base your life on and your, your, uh, your company on? All right. These are things that will not change over time. Once you set these, they're default, they, they're pre-wired and you can't do much about these things. At least you shouldn't. Um, so let me go back to the, uh, play from the current slide there. And we're going to look at the next slide, which are, um values okay so values are internal and they're subjective and they may change over time so let's go over some values right some of these these are from companies that took off their website one global network right having a client value the best people having a diversity a diverse workplace having passion being genuine being exceptional being innovative providing quality and having a will to win. Of course, these are some values that you might get into, but they may change over time. Okay. So uh, let's look at uh, some things that uh, may change. Why would you want some of these things to change? Okay. So you might say, uh, you know, a will to win, for example. All right. So will to win, you know, what, what is that? That's it's, that's not even uh, this looked upon now. It's cancel culture. If you got a will to win, uh, will to win is not really having um, com- being competitive or, or having uh, one to crush the competition. These are outdated values. You shouldn't have these values. A will to win is that saying that you're driven? Because that's okay. You could be driven. You could be motivated. You could be really um, have a good drive to want to succeed. But you want to succeed to help people. That's how you win by helping people. So having a will to win may come off wrong. So that may be a value one day that you have outgrown and you want to get rid of it and, and it, it put something else in its place, like being genuine or, or, uh, you know, the best people again, what is that? Does that, what's the best people All right, this might be outdated. You might want to change your value. If it's uh, up on a wall somewhere, we hire the best people, you know, that's, that's a little bit triggering these days, maybe to some people, right? What is the best people? I know people do. People do dumb things. They say dumb things. They think dumb things. But you got to account for dumb people because we're surrounded by them. <laughs> so maybe if you have a, a big banner at your wall that says, we only hire the best, uh, re- maybe revisit that. You know, there's a lot you could choose from. And I'm not saying to go woke by all means. But again, why are you giving people a reason to, uh, to cause trouble in the workplace? You know, that, that's just a gimme, right? It's a layup. You got a lot to choose from. So choose some things that um, that may be a little bit more um, less subjective there and a little more um, <laughs> 2022. Uh, but you definitely don't want to go too far woke either. All right. So let's go on uh, again to the next one we want to talk about is developing your, uh, let's see here, your diverse course we're gonna do this again bam 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 the next one we're gonna be getting into your differentiating proposition and again simple what these are these long words right they're so dumb what do you do better than anyone else what is your differentiating proposition what do you do that nobody else can do what do you offer that no one else offers what do you what makes you worth doing business with all right so for customer service all right I know the chat's a little slow. I think I got some internet problems here, but if someone wants to put down in the chat, who do you think of when you think customer service? Okay, and I'll give it just a second here. And while you do that, I'll still try to figure out how to get to this dang chat. <laughs> I don't know how uh, to get the chat on my iPad. I wish I could, but I can't see it. But uh, anyway, let's let's get that answer up there. Zappos is uh, we have that. Anyone have Zappos? Right, they're they're the lead. The culture, the business culture in their customer service. All right. Fastest delivery. Which company 
has branded itself, has, has surpassed all these other companies. It used to be just the U.S. Mail. And then you had when it absolutely positively had to get there overnight. Right. Then you had FedEx. All right. Uh, UPS. Right. I don't know. We got Brown. <laughs> I don't even like that one. That's a horrible one. But now we all know who it is now. It's Amazon. Nobody thinks about anything else but Amazon when we think about delivering fast. I mean, used to be uh, you ordered everything online. That was great for Amazon. They really got uh, to it down pat to get anything you want from one website, which is what, what differentiated Amazon from FedEx, right? It wasn't the fastest delivery. Is that you could get whatever you wanted from one website, okay? But uh, what happened after where – it, where did it get to? It wasn't only – Anything you want, you can get from here. It's that I can get it to you faster than anyone else, right? Then you got it in two or three days pretty consistently. Then you got it the next day. Hell, I get stuff the same day. There's a comedian. I forget his name. Is He's like, you, we're not happy with that, right? As Americans, we're not happy. We want to order the food. We want to deliver now. 15 minutes. No, five minutes now. We want it now, right? It comes into your house, and they put it in your mouth, and they chew for you, right? That's the next level that we're going to. Right. Where else can we go besides that? All right. Just think of it. And then someone's in your house putting the food and then moving your jaw around, massaging your throat like the dog when he takes medicine. So, um, yeah, some pretty, uh, pretty advanced stuff Amazon does. But if you're an agent and I kind of bring this all back around to real estate agents, um, we want clarity on our, our clients, too. OK, so do you want to work and sell homes in the United States? Yeah, sure. <laughs> but not really. You need to focus. If you're a Florida agent, you want to sell houses in Florida. Yeah, probably, but I think we can do better than that, right? Do you live in Broward County? You know, this is the kind of thing you want to drill down further. And then I would go dr I'd go down a lot more than that. I'd farm down to a neighborhood, right? I'd farm all the way down to the neighborhood that you're living in. And then you're getting clear on who you want to serve. You want to serve the family, right? A new family. Finding them the best homes, areas that uh, have new schools with great uh, parks and shopping and all that stuff the stuff that's easy to get to or do you want to maybe service empty nesters maybe you're a little bit older like me and you can identify or you know a hell of a hell of a, hell of a lot more of empty nesters than you know single young families maybe if you're a younger realtor you might want to focus on younger families but why is this important right house is a house right no it's not all right it's about connecting and re building relationships and, and working the networks and getting getting these these um, introductions. And then once you find out what the family looks like, where are they probably going to live? You want to learn all you can about the single family house and the school districts and the malls and the shopping areas, the food places you're going to go to. Or if you're empty nesters, maybe you want to know a little bit more about condominiums, or, you know, beachfront property, you know, different types of building um, rules and regulations and uh, budgets and all this stuff, right? Limitations. So, Big difference. You want to be very clear on who your client's going to be. Uh, and then it's my one of my favorite is the elevator pitch. This is what uh, I really love the elevator pitch. And I'll tell you why. I'm going to get out of here for a second because I don't need to. You don't need to really see this. OK. There we go. Uh, so. So we got uh, elevator pitch. Elevator pitches is, is basically who do you help and how do you help them? And, and if you could say that in about 10 seconds, that was, uh, that's the idea. Okay. So when you, when you are clear about who you help and how you help them, then you become clear on how you can explain what you do to people, right? I explain what I do. So what do I do? I make business owners more money. That's my 10 second or three, my three second pitch. I make people by business owners, more money. And what's a business owner? Any business, any industry, you name it. But what if uh, what if I have 10 seconds? We have a little bit longer, a little bit more to say. So I make business owners. I, I do this by examining 12 core business elements that are present in almost any business. And I guarantee that I can find any business $50,000 with uh, just one hour. I guarantee it. Right? So that's, that's a 10-second pitch. One of the things I really like doing is, is dismantling the pitch, the elevator pitch. And I like to ask a question of somebody. So if you're not in networking, I'll have the networking here in a second. But if you're not in networking and you have time to, to play cat and, and mouse with the, with the person, 
and uh, you've got a chance to do, you know, quote unquote, your elevator pitch. I like this one. So you're across from Saudi and they ask you, what do you do? So I ask him, are you a business owner? And, you know, if I've been a place like uh, where I know there's probably business owners, you could ask, are you a business owner or do you know any business owners? Of course, you could ask that. And they're going to say either say, yes, I'm a business owner or yes, I know. I know. Him, but let's go with, yeah, I own a business. Well, I make business owners more money. Most of the time, they're going to ask how you do that. Not all the time, but most of the time they're going to. And if they don't ask you, they're not interested and you don't have to waste your time talking to them. But if they're interested in what you, if they want to make more money, they're going to ask you, how do you do that? That's what you want. Now you've got the hook in them. How do you do that? So by asking them, are you a business owner? Yes. Well, I help business owners make more money. How do you do that? Now you've got them. They're interested. Their eyebrows are going up. They're paying attention to you. Anything that's gone around you just got down. Or just The noise just dropped in their head. They're listening to you. So what I say then is, well, well, tell me, what is your biggest obstacle in your business? And I'm setting it up, right? I put the ball right there on the tee, and I let them tell me. Most of the time, they're going to tell me what leads. They don't, they don't have enough leads. They don't have enough quality people. They're having, they're, they, they lose people. So they need some help uh, in, in customer acquisition. Uh, they want to make more money, right? They're, they're making a lot of revenue, but they're not making profit. Their website's not working, whatever it is. And I always say, well, you're not alone there. I hear that a lot. You know, these days, this is what the people, this is their biggest complaint. So I make them feel like they're not doing something wrong themselves. It's a very common problem. And I say, what I do though, is I come in and I examine the 12 core business elements and I illustrate to the owners that I can fix the problem that they're having and improve not only that, but the other elements in their business. In fact, I guarantee that within one hour, I can find them $50,000 of additional revenue and cost them $0. Now, are they interested? Yes, they always are interested. So I'm going to put uh, this next one up on the slide because it's one of my favorite ones to share. And <laughs> it's because it's... Um, because it's kind of sneaky selling. And so I'm kind of showing off. And I want to get maybe your opinion on this. Okay, so now it's a, a networking event. All right. I'm in, a, uh, I'm in a networking event. And I get to stand up and spend 60 seconds. So I say, hey, great day, Warriors. My name is Jeremy Torskin. I am the chapter's executive business coach. I make business owners more money. Here's a list of some things that you can listen for to know if Jeremy can help. Number one. If someone says, my website isn't producing any calls, Jeremy can help. Number two, I wish I understood how people make money on their social media accounts. Jeremy can help. And finally, just ask somebody what they do. And if they cannot clearly explain who they help and how they help them in under 10 seconds, you guessed it, Jeremy can help. Now, today I'm looking for real estate professionals who would like to learn how to develop their personal brand and that will lead to generating more quality leads and who would like to stop worrying about depending on brokers for real estate training when they really need a business training from a business coach. Remember, my last name is spelled too risk, but you risk nothing when you refer business to me. How's that? Is that money? I think it's, I think it's, <laughs> I think it's money because I think where I'm going to be uh, uh, saying that is in a room full of a thousand realtors. So I think I like it. Uh, sneaky selling. That's what we call sneaky selling from the stage. Uh, let's people know in the audience exactly what I do, who I help, and how I can help them. Uh, so let's get back really one, two, three uh, to what we do here. Uh, 954-338-9799. Let me get the phone number up here again. Mr. Octopus here. I could definitely use a producer. Uh, one of these days, one of these days, Alice, I will be able to afford a producer and it'll be nice because I'll just be able to concentrate on you, but uh, give me a call. If you want to talk about your business, 954-338-9799. Otherwise I'm just going to keep going through some of these. We're here till nine o'clock tonight, 8 PM to 9 PM, 8 PM, 9 PM. Every Wednesday we were doing two hour blocks, but it, you know what? I get up at three o'clock in the morning. That's a long damn day uh, starting this show at eight o'clock. So we, I commit to you a, a better hour, I'm uh, still going to have guests on. I think we're going to do, you know, 10-minute guests here and there. But um, 
for right now, we're just going one hour at a time until we build the, the audience up. Maybe we go back to two hours. Maybe we don't. Who knows? That's the beautiful thing about being your own boss and just getting the word out to the people about who you help and how you help them. This is what I do all day long. Speak to groups around the country. And I have clients who uh, come online and uh, got, to, get the, got the good stuff. All right, I got the good stuff. So if you need any help, we'll do a free one hour assessment of any business. And I guarantee to find $50,000 at least in any business. Let's go back to point number two on the seven strategies. It is your back end. Well, so we kind of want to uh, start. Okay. Let me get uh, my mouse up here. Ooh -wee. Okay. So number two, we want to start with the back end. Okay. We want to start with the end in mind. First of all, have an exit strategy. Now, again, this is true for any business, having an extra exit strategy and just starting with the end in mind. Uh, one thing that I'm going to talk about, not going to really apply to everybody, but everyone should be incorporating. Okay. Everyone should be covering their assets. All right. Capital A, capital S, capital S, little E, little S, little S. Co covering your assets means being incorporated. Now, as a real estate agent, which again, this, this slideshow in, in particular, I'm going to be showing to realtors. And so we're going to be talking about that PA, corporate your name PA. So when you're a realtor and you work for a broker, they're not allowed to cut a check to a business because your license isn't a business license necessarily. You're licensed as an individual. And so you can't incorporate um, and change your name. You know, like, uh, for example, Jeremy Torres. I have a, biz, uh, a license, a real estate license, a personal license to sell real estate. I can't open a business called Atlantic Real Estate and have my broker cut a check to Atlantic Real Estate for my commission. That's illegal. Uh, so what I have to do to get around that and still to cover my assets, I can open a business called Jeremy Torres. And then LLC, Jeremy Torsk Incorporated, Jeremy Torsk uh, PA's professional corporation, which is a, a is that PA that you see there. Very common. So again, I'm not a financial advisor. I don't give tax advice. I don't give financial advice. See your tax accountant, see your, your accountant, and ask them, which is best for you? Uh, the LLC, the Incorporated, the PA, which is professional corporation. Any of those are fine because what happens when you get a – check written from your broker to Jeremy Torres. They're not going to put comma PA. They're just going to put Jeremy Torres, but your business account will be able to cash that or accept that as a check because, you know, whoever writes comma LLC, right? When I get a check to Atlantic Business Coaching, no one puts comma LLC. They just write a, a Atlantic Business Coaching. So just Jeremy Torres would work if I have a business account now with, with Jeremy Torres comma PA, for example. So, um, Exit strategy. Let me tell you why that's important. Really important. Because if you're around me, eventually you want to grow and you want to do some more things on your own. You don't want to give your commission away. Eventually, you're going to want to be your own broker or at least be a broker agent or at least maybe go to another broker that pays a little more because maybe they don't do as much training and they don't do as much hand-holding, so they're going to pay you more commission. So always, always, always plan on leaving the first day you start, okay? Which means incorporating to protect your assets and start paying the right, you know, but less the least amount on tax, but also building your personal brand. That's so important, building your brand. Not being uh, so tied to that brokerage. It's okay. You have to legally. It's got to be on your business cards. Legally, it's got to be on your uh, advertisements. Legally, there it's got to be so so many you know inches. I know all that, but I'm talking about in your post and everything. You want to you know really grow your personal brand because brand because when you separate, you don't want them to remember that's so and so from this marketer or broker. You want them just to remember you. So always, always. We'll build, work on building that personal brand. Very, very important. Okay, next thing on the back end is your back end tools, your CRMs. And if you're new, you may not have a CRM. Or if you're working for a broker and they're taking a lot of money from you, they may give you their CRM. And most of them do, because why? Who can guess why most brokers uh, give you their own CRM? 
It's because that that way they own all the all the data. They all the data collection that you put in the CRM, they get. So I would say if it's your data, start putting your own data in, a, in an Excel spreadsheet, put it in then into a uh, CVS or CSV, excuse me, file, and then download that into their CRM. So that way you have it. If that way you don't have to put all that data in twice. You could do it that way. Uh, sometimes if you have to do it twice, though, it's worth it. That data is your data. You give it to them, but that's your client. You know, uh, you're going to be advertising to them for the next 30 years. doesn't mean you're going to be with the same broker for 30 years, right? But that's your client. So they're not going to give you that data when you leave. They're going to keep it. And they're going to see, they're going to be giving it to another realtor. And they're going to be, you know, reaching out to them in 20 years when they think they're ready. So how long do people live in a house now? Seven years, right? They know that. They're going to start advertising to them in six years. So you do the same thing because you have the relationship, right? And they already know your brand because you built your name, your personal brand. So keep your own data and your own resource files. So everything that they're, they're training you, if you can download that stuff, keep a file in your own personal file folder. So that way you can refer to that if you leave. Okay. All right. Let's go on. Number three, communication. I'm a fan of it. <laughs> you can never do it. Uh, you can never overdo communication. However, you can do communication wrong. You can be a jerk about things. You can, uh, you know, you can uh, use very bad words when you're sending emails and texts to people, especially if you're aggravated and use uh, words that, that are inflammatory and stupid. Yes, that's, that's a bad, but I'm a fan of good common sense, timely communication so i have something called a two-minute warning and that is basically if somebody calls me and obviously i'm on the phone a lot right all day long i'm in sessions or i'm speaking or i'm recording or i'm uh, on a podcast or i'm on a webinar and i don't answer my phone that often when it rings but i have a two-minute warning where i tell myself i got to at least in two minutes swipe up and hit a button that's automated that says, sorry, can't talk to you right now, but can I call you back in a few minutes? Boom. Now at least they know I've acknowledged their call. They're not going to leave me a message, I hope, because that's annoying. Uh, and I'm going to call them back. And then you got to have the say-do ratio. So if you're going to say things, you have to do them in the equal amount of, ra of ratio. So it should be 100%. And that's also, bam, a, Nick, a Noodleberg uh, nugget right there. The say-do ratio. So when you say you're going to call someone back, call them back, right? Typically, you have breaks every half hour, every 45 minutes, hour at the most. Uh, you definitely want to call back uh, calls you missed within an hour. So, um, you know, communication is very important. Now, weekly communication, when you're in a long-term deal with a client, like, again, we're going to bring this just back to real estate, but it's true of any industry. Long-term, you're going to want to give them weekly communication. You want to give them the good, bad, the ugly every single week, right? So if nothing happened in a week, you're going to tell them that. You're going to send them an email or whatever communication that you pre-agreed upon might not be email. Maybe it's text. Maybe it's a phone call. Maybe it's uh, a letter, you know, written down or some sort of report that you got to give them. Maybe it's a Google Docs. Whatever it is, at least weekly, you want to tell them, you know, if you haven't spoken with them, Nothing's happened, but here's the expected steps that are should be act, uh, happening. The expected action items in the next seven days till we talk, till we speak, until I owe you this again. I, I expect this to happen, All right? And then give them the good, the bad, and the ugly. Do it in an effective way because there's uh, emails out there that people just man, they just they go on and on and on and on. They t say a bunch of words that they don't need. So keep your emails very bullet pointed right down there. Just good, bad, ugly. Here's what happened. Good. Here's what happened. Uh, we got to get around. Here's a couple of things that were action items. Now I will say one thing. If it is very complex, don't do bullet points and mix topics. If it's complex and you're going to do bullet points, leave that subject by itself. So the subject in the title at the top subject bar uh, you can retrace it by searching by that complex thing because you might have to refer to it a lot, right? So leave that in its own email, put something, some logical terms up in the subject bar. Uh, but also you want to do this too if it's uh, liable, 
if, it, if it's questionably liable, in other words, if somebody could sue you over it, if there could be, if somebody could sue somebody over it, if, if you could see this being a document that would be entered into a deposition, you know what those are. You know what, what subjects are, are touchy. Go ahead and put those in their own email. And again, the subject line should be very clear and tied, back, tied right down to that touchy situation so that you can find it easy. Should you ever get subpoenaed to, to produce these things, you're going to find them easy. You're not going to have a bunch of other things and they're extemporaneous. There you go. I spit it out there. Uh, things that, that are going to just confuse a jury. You're going to make it very clear. That way you can be helpful for, to your client. You can be helpful to yourself. Whatever the se- legal situation is, you don't want to muddy the water by having a bunch of other stuff on that email. That, qu- by the way, could prove, uh, by the way, that you are being, you know, irresponsible or something just because uh, – Maybe you're making some jokes about something and then you put this over here and now it's in the front of a jury and they don't find that joke so funny. So you kind of take some points away. So anytime something is sensitive, put that in its own email. Okay. Uh, We're zooming along now. Number four, know your numbers. These are all strategies. These are all tactics and mindsets uh, uh, that you must have to have a successful business. No matter what the business, all of these things play a role in your success but they really also play a role in your failure, especially when you scale, when you start growing, you start hiring people, and you expect them to do these things. If you don't know about these things, you're not going to be able to teach it. You're going to be hoping that someone else that you're hiring knows about it. You better you know, understand that um, you're, you don't want to trust somebody. You want to know these things yourself before you hire people. So we got um, here a, a message about the email. I send an email to a seller during the process of selling, showing everything done each week uh, when you have a listing. So that's perfect. Every single week, there's a a list. So Christy has a great process, right? She has a system, and in the system, she has processes. One of those processes is a, uh, or systems, is the checklist. And that checklist, she goes and she works that. That's the process of working the checklist. And she sends the updates to the clients every single week showing these are done, these are not done, but here's some action items or some timelines that when they're due to be done so that there's very much clarity in the communication. So you see how all of these little bubbles here, they always intertwine with each other. They're like atoms bumping across each other, right? No one of these things is more important than the other one. No matter what in time, something is always more important. But this is a good email, uh, a good system to have, Christy. Uh, send emails to the sellers during the process of the selling, showing that everything that's done each week and uh, what's going to be done, what's due to come next, and then uh, what's going on after that. So that way you can prioritize. You can also uh, follow up with the people who are have the deliverables, right? So if you know something else is due – this week, if someone else is doing three weeks, you're not going to bother calling that person. You're going to call the person that has the deliverable due tomorrow. That's the person you need to call next. So great email. Thank you very much. Um, brilliant, right? Doing our best John Cleese there. Huh? Right? Brilliant. That's a very old reference right there. So let's go to knowing your numbers. This is my favorite because I'm, I'm a numbers guy. You know, in operations, everything is about numbers. So where are we? I want it too high. Knowing your numbers. Okay, so bam, knowing your numbers. So as a business owner, these are just a few numbers. Of course, there are lots of numbers to know. And then you also want your team to know the numbers. You want to be transparent about all your numbers. So one of the things, though, that I always say when you're very first starting off with a business, I have a new client who's starting this week, a uh, brand new business, and I'm going to help him uh, break some things down. But priority is knowing your break-even number. How much do you need to make to make your bills, to keep this business open and to keep your, your rent paid, to keep your kids in school, to keep uh, you know the insurance paid? All these things, you have to add them all up. And then you'll have a number that you can work backwards from. So that's the most important part of doing your, you know, working backwards, having that excess salary, start, starting with the end in mind, right? So how much do I need to earn in a year or a month or a week? And then you could supplement that, which is fine. 
going over what you need to, to make money because that's all your, your your retirement money and your uh, you know your vacation money, your Christmas money, all that stuff. But what do I need just to really have the bare necessities covered to stay in business and to stay married, <laughs> to stay happy, keep the kids in school? Once you know that, right, and you break it down to a monthly basis, then you could say, how many houses do I need to sell to make that much money in a month, right? What's it, what's my commission? Then you do the math from there and then you go, okay, I need to sell one house every three months. Let's just say at these rates today, these are pretty high. Um, hopefully your break even number is pretty low, right? Don't go over your, your head there. Um, but, uh, you know, just because you're in real estate, for example, and yes, you give people riding your cars, you don't want to go buy a freaking hundred thousand dollar SUV, right? You can have a little leased Nissan. It's fine. Okay. People are, nowadays, you don't even really give people rides. You meet them at the house and they just follow you. Uh, you go house to house. So you, hardly anyone gets in our cars anymore. Very, very rarely. Just do people just get in our cars to go sell, uh, sell them houses. Uh, so knowing your, uh, knowing your break even number, then knowing what that ties into with how many houses, for example, if we're talking about realtors and, you know, thanks for, uh, you know, letting me get this out in that realm because that's who I'm going to be speaking to this month. Uh, but uh, then knowing your your budgets and forecasting. And then, of course, we covered profits first a few weeks ago. By the way, I got something really cool, very super cool. Profit first. You guys remember Mike uh, McCallowitz wrote the Profit First book. I did the book review. He wrote a new book called, and well, that looks freaking cool. Look at that clock, <laughs> clockwork, man. It's my green screen stuff behind it. That's cool. I'll put it here. There you go. Clockwork by Mike McCallowitz. And here's what's really cool about it. Design your business to run itself, which I always, always recommend. It's harder for agents. So this is just this is just a side note of this cool book that I got. But here's what's so cool about it. This book isn't released yet. Okay, I got a certified copy of this book. And it's numbered. And it's signed. So this is number 122 of 250 copies. It's uh, going to be published August 23rd. So I got it a month in advance. And I want to be reading this book and doing a, uh, a book report on it. Uh, I got it on July 18th. Author signature here, Mike McCallowitz, uh, forward by Gina Wickman. Really cool. Again, that's not normal. You're not, your book will not look like this. I got a green screen going on. Uh, but that's, that's basically what it looks like right there. Clockwork and uh, design your business. Run says, I don't know if this book is worth anything yet. I know what it's worth to me, $47, because I paid for this special manuscript that uh, is a pre-release sign numbered certified. It was worth it to me. It's probably going to sell for in the 20s anyway. So what I paid double for a book. But it's cool because it's got certified and everything. So um, I'll let you know how it is. I'm sure it's amazing because Profit First is life changing. It's business changing. It saves lives. Profit First. It saves businesses, which saves lives. So I'm sure that Mike, uh, here's a shout out to Mike McCallis. Thank you for this special edition. Um, number 122 of 250. I'd like to get you on the show, Mr. McCallowitz. Now that I know how to say your name, please. Uh, if someone knows Mike. Please reach out to him and ask him to be on my show. Let's get down to business. I'll, I'll record it another time if he wants to, and we'll we'll do a pre-record roll on here. But, yeah, I'll read that over the next few weeks, and we'll do a book report um, maybe right when it comes out. Uh, Mr. Kane in the house, uh, buddy. Code 3, pest removals right there. Travis Kane, brave, one of our servicemen, to uh, Mr. Fireman. But uh, – also running his own small business. But anyway, I digress. I will not be doing that in Orlando. Actually, I probably will because I'm. <laughs> that's just how I am. All right. Now, no one's answered this in the chat. And I know that I know Scotty Garber knows what ROR is. I don't think he was on earlier. I know what Scotty knows. I know Christy knows. I know Kevin Thatcher knows. Kevin Thatcher knows what ROR is. Um, Travis Kane may not know what ROR is, uh, because this is a big Noodleberg thing, but we've been touting this thing for a couple of years now. Um, so, 
I'm going to, again, I hate this delay because I can't, I can't just sit here for 30 seconds and wait for you guys to hear the question and type it in the chat. So I'm going to go. Someone will put it in there in a second. Here's the big reveal. <laughs> Wrong screen, stupid. All right. It's return on relationship. Everyone knows about ROI. And, yes, everyone ROI. Uh, good guess, bud. Travis, I'm glad you did put take a stab at it. But it is the return on your relationships. Bam. That is, that's where it is. That's where it is. Return of rate, return of on, on investment, all these things uh, that people like to measure. It all comes from the return on the relationships that you build. The time you put into making true relationships like Travis and I are building and just be and I warriors like Kevin Thatcher has taught me to build these relationships, Newtelbergs and McGregor and, and Wes Parsons, you know, my wife, Christy, these people, they just, it's Scotty Garber. All, uh, we just live and breathe doing good for other people and learning how to really connect with people on a personal level. Now, does that mean everybody? Hell no. I'm picky as hell who I, who I might want a relationship with, right? Because I know that the return on the relationship goes both ways. Being in a relationship with me has returns. I'm not going to waste my time with people who aren't, aren't worthy of my, uh, my relationship because they're not doing the right things. They're not going where I want to go. They're not doing what, uh, you know, what I consider is worth spending time on. Uh, I want to go and hang around people who want to get better, who are in business, even entrepreneurs. That doesn't mean I'm not friends with people who work for corporations. Of course I am because their mind, they're business owners in their mind. All right, because you're not going to get better hanging around people who aren't doing what you want to do and where you want to go in life. So um, that return on relationship is very special. And so uh, don't waste your time with a bunch of people who aren't doing what you uh, want to get better at doing. OK, um, so people who, who are um, above and, and below you, not right where you are. And then people who are ahead of you. Right. Maybe three or four spots. That's the sweet spot, man. Hanging out with people, being the the example, and then at the same time hanging out with people who you are just trying to keep up, and all you're in their dust. That's where you want to be, right? Because you want people in your dust, and then you want to just hear them trampling, right, and running, because you know I'm gonna keep feeding you, so I keep you behind me. And then the person in front of me, I'm gonna be letting them hear that I'm right behind them, so they can keep feeding me, so I can stay behind them. That's how it works. That's how return on relationship works. And you just hyper, you hyper move through space in your career by um, that return on relationship. All right. Bob Berg's got it, man. But return on relationships right here. Uh, Bob Berg is my man, Mr. Go-Giver. All right. The Go-Giver Alliance. Uh, the more people you help, the more you will get in return. We talk about that all the time. So, uh, Let's go on now. We've got about 12 minutes. We're not going to get to the end of this. I've been um, pulled off base a couple times tonight. That won't happen on stage, but appreciate. And I'd like to hear the feedback from you, even personally, even one-to-one. -one. Say, Jeremy, I don't see this working on stage. I don't see this being interesting. I don't see this uh, changing anyone's lives. So hey, let me know. I, I'm open to your, to your criticism, to your feedback, whatever you want to call it. Uh, maybe if I'm not hitting on something you think I should hit on, I'm, I'm open because guess what? Anyone's watching this for the most part are people who I respect and who I, uh, you know, who get what I do. So bring it on. You guys know, Mark, I showed you that picture in the first few minutes, right? Get punched in the face. Do that for a hobby, right? You're not going to hurt my feelings. So I'm open to the feedback, people. Um, peer to peer advice. Again, I was just talking about mentors, proximity. Uh, that will open the key, turn the key to referrals and introductions, right? So we are on five of seven, but we're going to add 5A here because 5A is uh, really related to that return on relationships, and that's building joint ventures and alliances. So I'm going to give you an example here. Okay, I'm going to give you an example. Let me go up here to this slide because I think it's important to see it clearly. I don't know that you see it any more clearly. I don't know. I, I'm Who knows? But anyway, uh, find a partner. Um, who is this, the exact same, uh, who has the exact same prospects? So it's another business. It's another business that serve the same clients, but you are sold in a different time. 
Okay. So for example, if let's do a florist, for example, you're going to want to find a, a, a partnership with an, a guy uh, who sells engagement rings. Okay. Cause you're a florist. It's your, where you are in the event ch chain is going to dictate who is before you and who's after you. And then these people could all pay each other referrals. And I think we went through this last week, as a matter of fact, because I remember my wife flipping on saying, not real estate agents. Yeah. Okay. I know we can't pay real estate agents. I know, but the, just, you still want to get the idea. I mean, you could pay them in love. You could pay them in uh, you know, car washes. You could pay them in uh, buying a, buying them donuts. I don't know. Pay is a loose word, but um, if you're, you know, going to be making relationships with people who uh, book churches, wedding planners, venues for receptions, wedding dresses, uh, the entertainment, the DJs, the honeymoon planners, right? There you are. Now they go for the florist. And then there's the people that make the wedding cake, the stuff that happens after you that you can then send them to the printer for the invitations, right? So everyone before you, they're sending you clients, right? In this case, brides, most likely, because you're a florist. And you're going to pay these people back in dollars or in shekels or in uh, thank you notes or in babysitting or, uh, you know, Rose petals, whatever. <laughs> People below, below you are going to pay you for sending them business. Does that make sense, everybody? That's called joint ventures and alliances. Okay, so let's do another one for where you're not in an event chain. This is somebody who, let's say, let's call him a realtor. <laughs> you're not really in an event chain, okay? You're going to identify JV partners based a little differently. So let's say you're going to have a power team, right? Anyone who comes to that goes to a broker, mortgage, a mortgage broker, or a title company, or inspector, or, or an insurance agent, or a real estate attorney. They don't really do that first, second, third, fourth, fifth. People do it all different times. They know a real estate attorney. They ask him for a realtor. They ask for a realtor. They go, "Who should I use? Uh, should I use an attorney?" All right. They go to a broker. Hey, I need to know how much I need to spend on a house before I can talk to a real estate agent. Smart, but not a lot of people are smart. All right, they just aren't. So they go to the realtor and they go, I want to buy a house. You go, did you get pre-approved? No, I got a perfect mortgage broker for you. You see how that this is not an event chain, but your power brokers together, all right? Then there's not really, they're the adjacents, right? Uh, the moving companies and the painters and the handy people, landscapers. These are people who you might want to know because these people are in people's houses a lot of times before. So this is more or less an event chain thing. Most of the time, people are going to start calling movie companies, get pricing, have painters over to put a whitewash on the house, get some things fixed, right? I know Christy's got things to get fixed, and I know we're trying to move out of that house in the next couple months. Landscapers, you know, people want to get that curb appeal going or contractors because they want to uh, finish a project they didn't finish. Start, you know, They started a project they didn't finish. All right, so very important for uh, anybody, for people there to have this kind of uh, relationship with people who can pass you work, whether you pay them or not, it's still just good paying, uh, paying, um, ba paying back things back and forth uh, in, in goodwill. And so there you go. Christy says, <laughs> pay your realtors with referrals. That's a great one. Damn. That's a really good one. You're going to get a lightning strike. You get some fireworks. You don't have to just pay them in cash. All right. Thank you, Christy Torsk. That was a good one. Uh, so that's that's for all you realtors out there. So let's go back here. And again, we've only got six minutes left, and uh, we're not going to get through all seven. Marketing, good thing, marketing. Here, here's the thing about marketing, guys. You already know this because we've gone through it a lot of times. So I'm just going to buzz saw through marketing. We know about advertising. We know about the conversion equation. We know about squeeze pages. We know how to get people's attention because we've covered this ad nauseum if you haven't seen the conversion equation, go look for another one um, video because we, we do good. People in Orlando are going to love it. Okay. 6A, all these things go towards leading you to better leads, more quality leads, narrowing that lead pool. So you're searching in an ocean, you're searching in a pool, kiddie pool now for your clients, right? In sales. And I, I had another slide that says sales and crossed it out and said service because you don't want to, you don't want to sell when you could just serve. Um, and then, of course, knowing the buyer's journey about the different times they're ready to buy. All right. Why should I buy? Uh, then it gets closer. Then it becomes looking for reasons not to buy. And then all of a sudden, when it's really at that time, they're going to do it. Who should I buy from? The buyer's journey. Very important 
to know that buyer's journey because when you're talking to somebody, you got to know where they are on that time bar to know what they're looking for and how to, you know, quote unquote, close them. And then landing the plane, what do you know? Training is important. Constant training, 1% better mentality. Uh, who are we reading? James Clear, I believe. Um, Atomic Habits. Okay, 1% better. Read, read, read. We uh, Just today on the Noodle Bird, they're talking about the average person. Do you know? Yeah, you did. You finally got your BAM. <laughs> That's a good one. That's two BAMs for you. <laughs> Sweet. I never realized that you never got a the bam that's a good that's a good suggestion that's why i got the bam um but the average person i'm gonna give you guys a second to put down in the text and the message here what is the average when's the last time the average person read a book and uh you know what i do have it but i don't have it at my fingertips and i don't know if i could play it on all these channels but it's the uh the jeopardy do 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 i can't even hum it because they might drop me but uh, I'll take a sip of water. Give someone a minute. When's the last time the average person read a book? I'll give you 10 seconds. Travis Kane, five years. <laughs> That's a long time, pal. Let me put that, I'll give you that up there. Uh, so that would be true if you were out of high school for five years because the average person Hand to God, you're doing better, Travis, because I know you're not five years removed from high school. Hasn't read a book since high school. Yeah, one year. No, high school. Can you believe it? Most people have not read a book since high school, since they had to. Uh, if you want to succeed in business, you better start reading. I'm just sorry. I'm a horrible. I used to be a horrible reader. I'm a very good reader now. I'm a very disciplined reader. I read a lot. Um do I read it effectively? No, not probably not effective as most people would say, but I do read enough to where a lot of it sinks in. I can do a lot of quoting and I can do a lot of reaching, but uh, yeah, high school. That's pretty sad. So Travis, you got a, I'm going to give you a book report, buddy. <laughs> I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you this book right here called clockwork. Uh, when it comes out, design your business uh, to run yourself, or, you know, we could go with labor to leadership, right? We could go with uh, the business treasure hunter. We can go with any of those books. Uh, but read, read something, uh, definitely, uh, help your business, uh, for sure. And then ask questions and, um, coming down here, uh, you know, continuous training, keep up with the industry news, look at technology, keep up with the new laws that are affecting your, your business, the new trends, the municipal improvements, the parallel industry trends. Okay. And then always, 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 always. Have a coach, okay? Uh, have a coach. And then, uh, again, if you uh, haven't heard, uh, I have a book, uh, The <laughs> Labor Leadership, and then The Business Treasure Hunter. And that is, again, the uh, the barcode. We have uh, about no time. I appreciate every single person who, uh, who, who reached out tonight. Thank you very, very much. Everyone who came through on the chat, uh, some of my old lost pals there, uh, Scotty Garber, you know, uh, I appreciate y'all, man. I do. Travis uh, putting it up there and Kevin and then the family, of course, my mother, my aunt, my my dang uh, wife, my dang old wife. I was surprised my sister didn't say hi tonight. Uh, everybody, uh, I can't tell you how thrilled I am that you allow me into your your orbit and your universe, uh, your environment once a week to come to you to bring home the uh, information to, to do better in your business or your life. I'm here for you. My last name is spelled two risk, but you risk nothing when you get down to business with me. So thanks, everybody, and let's all get down to business.